Hello and welcome. You are now looking at YouTube.com and you were looking at a whiteboard animated video. And in this course, we're going to be discussing a process for you to be able to create your own whiteboard videos, regardless of which kind of software or particular service that you use. For example, there are some who use the service Powtoon, which creates animated whiteboard videos and presentations. Others use Sparkle, which strictly creates whiteboard videos. Others use sites like GoAnimate, Animatron, and even some use the desktop program TechSmith Camtasia. Others use desktop programs like Video Maker FX, which is strictly made to create animation videos, as well as Easy Sketch Pro, which is again a program that you would have on your desktop. Now you'll need a couple of tools in order to make this work. You'll need some kind of presentation software. And if you don't have one that you own like PowerPoint, you can use Google Slides as long as you have an internet connection. You'll also need the ability to create and produce audio on your personal computer. If you don't have a microphone or headset, there are very inexpensive options available such as the Plantronics Audio 355, which plugs into your stereo jack so that you don't have to take up any of your USB ports. Now, although the process is going to be the same for most, if not all video creators that we're going to take you through in this course, we're going to focus on using Sparkle, which is whiteboard videos. And once again, the process that leads to Sparkle is what you want to focus on because you will be able to take that process and you'll be able to use it regardless of what your video creator is. We will just focus on using this program so that you'll be able to see, so that you'll be able to determine the steps for your video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to assume that you already have a script and you're looking at a brief script that we have written for an animated video. And as you'll notice that it's not very long and you'll wanna make sure that you have read through the script so you know exactly how long it is. Now the best way to go forward once you have this script is to transfer it onto some kind of presentation software. And you can do that with a program like PowerPoint or as we said, you can use that with Google Docs using the slide menu. So you want to put one sentence at a time on each slide and then you can then get ready to begin reading your script. Now in order to record the script you are going to need some audio editing software if you have Camtasia or if you have Audacity you can then read the script and then edit it to make sure that it meets your specifications. In order to record the script simply turn on your slideshow presentation and then you're going to narrate your audio. Now it's going to be important when you are narrating your animated video that you leave a little gap between the timing of each slide so that you will then have time to change the scenes of each of your animated videos. So if you think about each line representing one scene, you wanna read the script and then pause slightly and then move on to the next slide. For example, Here's how we would read this script and here's how we would page through it. And we'll do three slides just so that you can see how to appropriately do the timing. Whether a company is operating in good or difficult economic times, they must market strategically. That means that there must be an overall goal as well as a core methodology for the company to follow. Blindly following trends such as mobile marketing or Google Maps without a strategy are unlikely to get you the results that you want from your promotional efforts. So you'll notice we read three slides and you'll notice that in between each slide we pause slightly and you'll see why this is necessary when we actually go to the timeline. So this is the fastest and easiest way to read your script to know what you're doing and to think through it. So whatever your audio creation software is, you can use Camtasia, you can use Audacity, you can use any of the screen sharing programs. And you have to remember, you're going to be creating an MP3 audio or a WAV file. So you don't really have to worry about the quality of the video. The only thing that you have to worry about is the quality of the audio. 
Now the easiest way to edit the audio is going to be to use a program like Camtasia. And the reason is that you have a visual timeline. So you can actually record your video in one take. You can note the peaks in the timeline and you can edit it. And then you can produce your audio, which is going to be an MP3. There's an important thing to note here about the use of Camtasia 9 versus Camtasia 8 or even Camtasia 7. And that is that you cannot produce an MP3 file in one step. It's going to take at least two. So if you are looking for a non-complicated way of being able to create and edit your audio in one step, you'll want to use Camtasia 8 in this case, which is the older version of the program versus Camtasia 9. Or you can also use the program Audacity, which will also allow you to record audio. And as you can see, we are recording audio as we speak. Now in the next video, we are going to record the audio and we are going to do it all in one take and then we're going to come back and we're going to edit the audio. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to narrate the audio and we're going to do this all in one take and we're going to edit it inside of our video software Camtasia. Now again, you can use whatever video editing software you'd like to use. If you'd like to use Audacity, as long as you can get the file into an MP3 format, you can use it too. Now what we're going to do is we're going to change this to a slide share. And as we narrate the slides, we may make a mistake as we go along. When we make a mistake, we're going to stop and then we're going to clap three times so that we will be able to note on the timeline where we are actually making a mistake. The other thing that we're going to do is what we talked about in the last video, which is we are actually going to pause slightly at the end of each slide. Okay, so with that, what we're going to do now is we're going to turn on our slide presentation. And then we're going to start narrating. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually bring the clock here and then we're going to note the timing also. So let's go back to the beginning. And then we're going to start the narration process. Whether a company is operating in good or difficult, whether a company is operating in good or difficult in economic times, they must market strategically. That means there must be an overall goal as well as a core methodology for the company to follow. Blindly following trends such as mobile marketing or Google Maps without a strategy are Blindly following trends such as mobile marketing or Google Maps without a strategy is unlikely to get you the results that you want from your promotional efforts. How you approach the market is as important as how much traffic you can get to your website. Understanding the nature of your customer and what they desire to buy will always trump even the best search engine marketing strategies. Therefore, what's needed is for you to understand the basic framework for marketing. Whether a company is doing internet marketing or television commercials, there is a certain structure that all successful marketing and promotion fits into. What is that structure? We'll discuss that more in our next video. If you'd like to explore this subject further, please check out the resource link you see on your screen. Okay, so now we have narrated the audio. You've noticed that we have made two mistakes. And so what we're going to do in the next video is we're actually going to edit and we're going to show you how to do that inside of Camtasia. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to edit the audio to get it ready for our video. So we're going to actually import that audio into Camtasia. So we're now going to import the file we just created into Camtasia. Okay, so now that we have the file, we're going to bring it down to our editing timeline. And so you'll notice a couple of things here. You're going to notice that there are some instances where you're going to see on the timeline where there were the three claps. And those are the places where we made mistakes. Now what we want to do is we want to go to the place where we started narrating the actual audio. And you'll note that we began right here. So one of the things we're going to do right away 
is we're going to then just cut out the extraneous audio. So what we're gonna do is we're going to split this in the timeline and we're just going to cut this part out. And then we're going to bring this entire audio back to our timeline. Okay, so now, if you recall, what we have here is we have the two mistakes we made, and then we have the end of our audio, which is going to be about here. Okay, so this is the beginning, and then this is the end. So what we need to do to edit our audio in Camtasia, one thing that we can do is we can take out any background noise. We can do that very easily in Camtasia. And you can do the same thing inside of Audacity also. We're just going to use the noise removal. Whatever the noise removal process is for your particular software, you just want to do a basic noise removal process of whatever background noise is in there. So you pick some area where there's nothing going on, no talking, and then you substitute that area for the rest of the audio. So now that that is done, we're going to go back here to the beginning of the timeline. And the way that you do this to make sure that you really have your audio correct is to do it in real time. So what you would really do is you would actually play the audio. So for example, you would click the play button. Okay, so we know now that that's a mistake and we've heard the mistake. And that is one of the reasons why you'd want to do this in real time. And so we're going to now take that part of the audio out. Okay, so now all we have is the beginning. Okay, so we can skip forward now to this next mistake. And now you'll understand now that we can see that mistake on our timeline. Right? We can see the three claps that we put there. So we know we can skip forward to that point. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what the mistake was we made here. Okay, so we're going to stop there. We're going to take that out. Okay, we can skip forward to the end. And then this is just the audio that we had at the end of our last video, so we can take that out. And so now we have audio for our video. And so what we would do is we would go back and we'd listen to this in real time. And we're not gonna Now we're not going to do that in this video, but that is what you would do. You would go back and listen to the whole thing make sure it is what you want it to be, and then you would go through the audio production process. Remember, if you're going to use Camtasia, you're going to want to use Camtasia 7 or Camtasia 8. You can use any version of Audacity, but we're gonna to need to get it into MP3 format in order to do that. So, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna produce this. We're now gonna produce this as an MP3, and then we're just going to click the next button. So we're gonna do this part off camera. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save this. Now, we're going to save this as an artifact for this course. We're going to save this as the audio we created in video three. So we're going to save that, and then we're going to click Finish. Now, if you have Windows, Windows is going to play that file right away. What you can do is you can open the production folder inside of Camtasia, and then there is your audio. Okay, so we have now created our script, we have now recorded that script and edited it, and now we're ready to go to the next step. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to be talking about the basic organization. And when you look at your script, one of the things that you can do to make the process very easy is to determine that each of the slides are going to be a scene in your video. And if that's the case, then what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to determine some keywords. And so you want to look at each slide. Like, for example, you're seeing here that this slide says whether a company is operating in good or bad economic times. You want to determine which of these keywords you're going to try to display with a visual. 
Are you going to use a picture or are you going to use words? Basically, you're going to be able to use either picture or you're going to be able to use some words in order to display. You want to get a good sense of what that's going to be ahead of time. And there's a reason for that because we're going to determine the style of the video. And then once we do that, we're going to determine whether or not we have the right assets in order to do this. So the next stage in this process is to determine your keywords. Which of these phrases, which of these words are you going to display with an image? The next thing you want to do is to determine two basic directions of your video. Are you going to have a video that's going to primarily be about things? So in other words, your images that you're going to use to represent your keyword, are you going to use things and words or are you going to use people and words? And it's easiest to display this with this image of Powtoon. So if you're going to have people in words in your videos, then that's one style of video. If you're going to have words and things, as you're watching here in this RSA video, that's another kind of video. And those are two basic directions that you can go as you determine what you want to display for your keywords, as well as what words you want to put into your video. Now there's a caution about using people in your videos. If you have a wide and diverse audience, you want to make sure that your images and your people are wide and diverse and that they will reflect what the people who are going to be watching your video will want to see. Depending on your video creation software, that can be easy to do. In some cases, that might be difficult to do. When in doubt, you can always use things in order to substitute for the words you're going to be displaying. If for some reason you have some reservations about how people are going to be reacting to what it is you're going to be displaying. So to recap, go through your script, determine keywords. Then determine the basic direction and style of your video so that you can begin looking for both music and or images. Hello and welcome. We are now inside of the animation creation software called VideoScribe and this is a stage of the process that you'll want to go through in your software. We're going to actually open a new canvas and one of the reasons that we're going to do that is we have now determined our keywords. We know what we want to display in our animation. We know what we want to display in our video. So what we need to do now is we need to determine as many of those assets that we have as possible. So one of the things that we can do inside of VideoScribe is that we can then do a search. So for example, we know that we want to display the word company. So we're going to go and we're going to look for that word inside of VideoScribe and we're going to see if there's anything that represents that company or if we're going to have to find some other asset. And you can see here that they've got some things that they feel represent company. We might want to look for some of the words such as building. And so basically, this is the stage of the process that you want to go inside of your video software. You want to take note of what you have and you want to determine if what you have is going to be enough for you to complete your process. You'll also want to know the file format required to work inside of your software. Now in this particular case, inside of Sparkle, the format is SVG. In some cases, the format can be PNG, the format can be JPEG. It really depends on your software. Now it may be that you do not have the assets that you want inside of your video creation software. So you're going to want to go and take a look inside of a database to see if you can find images that will represent the words that you want to use in your video. And there are sites such as Graphic Stock and others that will give you access to vector graphics that you can actually use inside of your video creation software. So in this particular case, we're just going to log into Graphic Stock so that you can see an example of what we are talking about. And you'll notice Graphic Stock has a different set of images and it may fit what you're trying to do inside of your project. Now, once again, you will want to be aware of what style that you have decided. Have you decided on a style with images that are going to be represented by things? Or are you going to be using images that are going to be represented by cartoon people? Most of the sites have search results that you can actually sort by the vector graphics 
where you can actually choose the ones that you want that might go better with your project. So you want to be aware of that when you are using sites like Graphic Stock. So once you've chosen your images, both inside of your software as well as outside of the software, you are now ready to go to the next step. Welcome back. Now, as we said in a previous video, the easiest way to organize your animated video is to do one scene at a time and to do it based on how you read the script. So for example, I'm just going to page through the script and you're going to see the slides change. And so each one of these slides were narrated so that there is a pause between each one of these slides. So the best thing to do would be to design a scene for each slide. So we'll design a scene for this slide. Then we'll design a scene for this slide that starts with that means. Then we'll design a scene for this slide that starts with blindly following trends. And then we'll do that for the entire video. So let's take a look at our video software. Now you'll notice that this scene is called Market Strategically. And so that scene is represented by this slide. So that scene will actually play while this is being narrated. So we only chose one image. We only chose two words that we were going to represent. So another slide starts with blindly following. We've got in there mobile marketing and Google Maps. So how did we decide to depict this in our video software? Now you'll notice that we chose a mobile device. We chose Google Maps and something to represent that. And basically this scene starts out with the mobile device in the middle. It's then going to slide over and then go to the next slide, which is going to have all of the words. One of the things that you're probably seeing is that there is a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can represent each scene. But the key to understanding is to design one scene at a time. So you'll see here, whether a company is doing internet marketing or television commercials, there's a certain structure that all successful marketing promotion fits into. So how did we depict that scene or slide? And you'll notice that we designed a scene with an image. We designed it by putting words on top of there. And so these things come on in rapid succession. Now it will be instructive for you to just see how this scene was designed to play out inside the video software. As we've said, as was said, every animation creation software is going to be a little different, but you want to see how this particular scene was designed with that slide. So we're just going to play this scribe. What's needed for you to understand is the basic framework for marketing. Whether a company is doing internet marketing or television commercials, there is a certain structure that all successful marketing and so once again, you can see that there is a lot of flexibility in terms of how you can design each particular scene. But what's most important is that you have a frame of reference and that you're only designing one scene at a time. You should have already gathered your assets, so you should have already thought you through your keywords. You already have the images that you're going to look to present. And so now all that you'll need to do is to go to your video software with the images and place them inside so that you can begin to work with the timing. You're now looking at audioblocks.com and audioblocks.com is one source on the internet that you can find for royalty free music for you to be able to use in your videos. Another source is Digital Juice and both of these are paid services. Now along with the video creation software that you probably have, you're also going to have royalty free music available. Now in the case of some of the software, you're not going to be able to input both a voiceover and audio into the same video. You'll have to mix the audio and the voiceover together and then add it to your software. And that is the case with the software you're looking at, which is Sparkle Video Scribe. So that means then you're going to want to use your audio editing software. In this case, we're going to use Camtasia. But before we do that, there is one thing that you're going to want to take note of. If we go to the library of Camtasia, you're going to notice here that they've got royalty free music for you to be able to use. So you can actually open up some of this music and you can actually preview 
what it's going to sound like, and if it's something that you feel as if would be appropriate for your video, you can actually use some of the music that they have inside of their library. The most important thing is going to be that you actually find royalty-free music that you have the rights to use commercially. So we're going to come back here to our audio voiceover, and this is the project that we had available in Camtasia. And what we're going to do is we're going to find some royalty-free music that we have on our hard drive and bring it into the editing screen here in our audio. You may have a source of royalty-free music, and you don't have to use the service. Regardless, you want to find the file, drag this over into your clip bin. We're going to close that out. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add this to the timeline. You're going to notice here that the music is going to be longer than our clip, which is actually fine. Now, one of the things you'll notice is that when we look at this timeline, that this particular music clip has a, an introduction and the volume is going to be kind of low up until that point. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to cut out that part. We're going to do a little bit of editing here. And we're going to actually, uh, we're going to actually take out the low volume point. And we're going to cut that out. And we're going to bring this back to our timeline at the beginning. And what we're going to do is we're going to pull this out at the end. We're going to let the music play a little longer after the video. And we're going to actually take out the rest. So one of the things that we can actually do in our audio is we can actually take one frame here. We're not working on the audio on track one. You'll see it's grayed out here. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to fade in this audio and then we're going to fade it out at the end. We're also going to lower the volume so that it's well below the voiceover. Now what we want to do is we want to listen to this in real time to make sure it is what we want. Whether a company is operating in good or difficult economic times, they... Okay, so we may want to lower the audio a little more so that it doesn't overpower our voiceover. So we'll lower it some more and then what we're going to do is we're going to produce a new audio. So all we do inside of Camtasia is we will go into this produce and share file and we will then produce and share another mp3 and then we're going to produce this again. We're going to call this with music. Okay so we have our file. We're now going to just click finish and then the audio is then going to produce. Okay, so Windows will play this that audio means right there away. There must be an overall goal as well as a core methodology. All right, so we're going to close that out. We're going to actually going to find the audio in our folder, and here it is. Actually, video three audio with music, and that's where our MP3 file is now. Is we're going to close this out, and we're now going to go ahead and close out our editing, and we have now completed the construction of our audio with music. Welcome back. Now in this video we're going to be talking about understanding the timeline inside of your individual video animation software. You're going to notice that we have a slide up here that we've talked about before that we are depicting with a visual as well as some words. Now one of the things we're going to need to do is we're going to need to add audio to our software and in this particular case you're going to notice that there's a file already there that's called introduction and actually this is a file that has been mixed together so we mix together the music we mix together the voiceover and we have uploaded this as one file to our animation software so now we have a one minute and eight second audio that we're going to fit all of our scenes into what you're going to want to understand are the particulars of the transition between elements. So I'm going to open up this particular screen inside of Sparkle. Now again, this is going to be different inside of every video creation software. The thing to pay attention to is going to be the transition and how long each element is going to appear, 
whether or not there's going to be a pause and then the transition that it makes to the next scene. Now, when you do this, these are going to be the things that you're going to want to pay attention to. You want to pay attention to how long it takes to draw or how long it takes for the action to happen. And then you want to play with the timing so that the pictures that are appearing in the screen are coinciding with the audio as it plays, right? So what you're trying to do is you're trying to basically match up these two elements with the words inside of the audio. And then you want the whole thing to transition to the next scene. Remember, we are designing by scene so that when we pause between the slides, when we were doing the voiceover, we want there to be a little pause and then for the next scene to come up. And so when we design these slides, we're doing the timing. In every case, I'm gonna open up this timing and we're going to work with these elements inside of our video creation software so that they coincide with each scene that we design. We're then going to transition to the next scene. And so that is the process that you're going to want to work through every time you get to a scene. You're going to work with the elements and you're going to want to make sure that they're playing with your audio. Now in the case of Sparkle Video Scribe and just about any other video software, you can take each individual scene and you can actually play the audio. So for example, we can play the audio to preview it just from what's happening what's here. needed for you to understand is the basic framework for marketing whether a company is doing internet so as you can see here what we're trying to do is we're trying to either slow down or speed up the drawing of the image to coincide with what's happening in the audio that's what's important and then we transition to the next scene marketing and what we're going to do is we're going to keep working through each scene we're going to look at the timing and we're going to match up the timing with the audio. And the way you do that inside of each video creation software is you play it and preview it at the point at which the audio is, right? So every time that you get to a new scene, you're going to have to do this process all over. Now, this is going to be the most time consuming process. In fact, anytime you add audio to a timeline, matching the audio with the images that you've already placed on your timeline, that's going to be the most time consuming part of the actual process. When we get to the last screen, you'll notice that there's a pause that we've placed here inside of Sparkle Video Scribe of about five seconds. And that is so that the last, the call to action will remain on the screen. Once again, this is going to be something that you're going to want to do individually inside of your video creation software, but that is to leave that pause at the end so that the viewer or the customer or the prospect can actually see your call to action. And in some cases, you can allow the music to play while this is actually going to be on the screen, and then you can then end the video. Now understand again, the reason why this process works is because we've already match the images and the writing to a particular scene. All we're really doing now on the timeline is we are working out timing. And so in every case, what we're going to do is we're going to play with the elements to actually match up what they're hearing with what they're seeing. But we've already done the hard work by selecting the images and matching them with a particular scene. But once you've done all your matching, you are going to want to save and save often. Video scribe software, any kind of animated video software takes a lot of resources. And so at every point, at every scene, every major event that you actually do, you need to almost hyper save. In other words, you should save after every little thing because the likelihood of you losing something or the software getting jammed or the software stopping with video creation software. So again, after everything that you do, make sure that you're saving your file and then once you get to the end what you're going to do is you're going to play the video clip to make sure it is what you actually want it to be welcome back now in this video we're going to be talking about some final processing options and you're going to notice here inside of sparkle video scribe they have many of the same options that most of the video creators have and that is to save your presentation to 
your hard drive as well as to upload them to some video sharing sites. You'll see YouTube, Facebook, and in this case, PowerPoint. You can also share it online through their website. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to click the save button. And when you do this, you are going to want to pay attention to a couple of things. Number one, you're going to want to be aware of the file. And in this case, Sparkle gives you the opportunity to do AVI, PNG, JPEG, WMV, or MOV. They also give you the opportunity to determine the size. Now, obviously, if possible, you want to go ahead and render in 1080, which is going to be full HD. The default setting is typically going to be around 30 frames per second. Now, what's going to be important about this is that in some cases, some of the software is going to produce an MP4, some is going to produce an MOV. You do need to change the file to MP4. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to go ahead and we're going to produce this video and then we're going to make changes to it so that it becomes an MP4. So let's go ahead and click the checkbox and then we'll start the production process. So the production process is now started. We're actually going to come back when the production process is complete and then we're going to work with the file which is MOV. Okay, so now that we have the file onto our hard drive, what we would do is we change this to MP4. And we could also use the rename command. Now this video is usable in just about any other setting. And typically when you will have one of those video creators to download in this format, it's changeable to MP4 just by renaming it. And so now that you've done that, you are now ready to bundle and deliver your animated video. Welcome back. Now we started this course assuming that you already had content that you turned into a script. That is not always going to be the case and we want to cover how you would very easily be able to take content, specifically PLR or resale rights content, into your animated video. So let's take a look at if you actually had a PDF that you purchased as content. And we're going to start this process in Microsoft Word to open the PDF. So what you would do is you would go to the file command and then you would then go to open the specific PDF file. You're now going to get a message from Microsoft Word saying that it's now going to convert your PDF into an editable Word document. Now one of the things you're going to have to be willing to accept here is that the formatting is not going to be the exact same as the PDF and we're not really looking for it to be because we really just want the text and we really just want the content because again we purchase this content maybe it's PLR or resale rights and we're going to be using it in order to turn it into an animated video. So what we're going to do now is just click OK. And you'll notice down here at the bottom that Microsoft Word is converting. And so in this case we now have our PDF document that is now a Microsoft Word document. So now assuming that this is the format that you're going to start working with, we are now going to go through a process where we're going to get our Microsoft Word document ready in order to create an actual script. And typically in order to start with an easy concept, what we try to do is to go to the beginning of each paragraph and take out the explanatory content. So we keep the first sentence and we take out the rest. So in this particular case you're looking at a title, we're looking at a subtitle which we would keep. We would then take out this explanatory content we would keep the subtitle. Once again, we take out the explanatory content and keep the first sentence. We do the same thing in each paragraph and we would continue on throughout this document. So what we've done is we've gone through the entire section. We've basically taken the first sentence and kept the subtitles for a section of this document. Now all we're going to do now is we're going to take this entire piece and we're going to cut it. We're going to actually go to a new document in Microsoft Word. 
Now that we have the content, what we're going to do is we're going to paste this document and we're not going to keep the formatting. So what we're going to do is we're just going to keep the text. So now we have basically all of the sentences and what we want to do is we want to pull these sentences into the same area and onto the same page. So we now have the content on one page in order to create our video. And we could have started with a Microsoft Word document that we had, but we chose to start with a PDF and we changed that PDF into a Word document. Now we have something that is workable to go to the next step. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to take this Microsoft Word document and go through a brief process and we're going to turn it into an actual script. Welcome back. Now that we have this new document, we need to go ahead and save it someplace where we're going to remember where it is. So we're going to go ahead and save this as chapter one outline. So now that we have this saved as chapter one outline, we're going to change the view in Microsoft Word. And now we're going to go to outline mode. And what we basically want to see is we want to see each sentence or each potential slide onto or connected to one of the side dots here and this is automatically happen once we change it to the outline view. So once again what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and we're going to save this document as it is. And now that we've done that we can go ahead and close our outline and we can then open up Microsoft PowerPoint. So what we're going to do when we get inside of Microsoft PowerPoint is we are then going to go into the view command and then we're going to go to the slide master. And then we're going to scroll all the way up to the top. And when we get here, what we're going to do is we're going to pull this title slide all the way down to the middle. And we can actually get rid of this piece. Once we've done that, then we are then going to go back to our view command and then we're going to go to the normal view. And what we're going to do now is we're going to import our slides. In order to do that, we're going to go to the new slide. We're going to click the arrow and then we're going to pick up slides from outline. We're then going to go and find our slides from our outline. And we'll see that here and we'll just click insert. What you'll see now is that Microsoft PowerPoint has opened up each of those outline points onto its own slide. And so now we have our script ready in order to be narrated. Of course, what we'll want to do is we'll want to go ahead and add in our call to action here at the end. But we now have our slides ready to be worked with inside of both our video creation software as well as to pick our keywords and everything else that we need to do with the actual script. Welcome back. Now in this video we're going to take a look at the mp3 audio and in particular what we will want to do is we want to turn these mp3s into animated video. However, you could run into a situation where you don't have the transcript and you don't necessarily have a script. So if that's the case, what can you do? This is actually going to be a case where it's going to be helpful to have your video editor. And what we're gonna do is we're going to pull one of these MP3 audios into the media bin. So we're gonna open up our video editor and what we're going to do is we're going to drag this onto the timeline. Now one of the things that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to decide on scenes. We're going to need to decide on where those scenes are going to occur. And one of the ways that you can do this inside of Camtasia is to use markers. So we're going to turn on the marker view. And what we're going to do is at the point at which we want to determine that a scene has occurred, we're going to mark that place on the timeline. So we're just going to start the player right now. There's a big misconception among many young people, especially those coming out of college. 
Okay, so let's say that what we want to do there is we want to make this a marker. So we want to make this one seam. So we're going to bring that down to the marker view. We're going to mark this space. And then we're going to go to the next space. That is the belief that the only thing that matters is what you do after you get your credit card, not before. Well, that's a terrible misconception that even prevents some from getting a line of credit. Okay, so we're going to mark this space as our second scene. Building credit is the act of managing your finances correctly, even if you don't have a credit card. Okay, we're going to mark this as our third scene. This includes paying your bills on time, your loans, purchases you've made, all that stuff. And we're going to mark this space. And we're going to go through one more period here, and we're going to mark one more space. Let's discuss the first implications of paying bills on time. Okay, so we actually have four spaces. And if we were going to do this, honestly, we probably would say that we would probably cut this to make a six scene. So we probably have now six scenes for our audio. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to decide on keywords for each scene. So what we're gonna do is draw the cursor back to the beginning we're going to open up our notepad file and then we're just going to choose keywords for each of the scenes. So let's make this smaller and then we're going to start the player here again. There's a big misconception among many young people, especially those coming out of college. Okay, so we've got some keywords. Uh, maybe we want to do misconception in college for the first. Then what we're going to do is go to the next scene and we're going to start to play again. That is the belief that the only thing that matters is what you do after you get your credit card. Okay, so we're going to uh, decide to use after credit card. So let's go to scene number three. Not before. Well, that's a terrible misconception that even prevents some from getting a line of credit. Okay, so we'll say prevent getting a line of credit. We're going to go to the next one. Building credit is the act of managing your finances correctly, even if you don't have a credit card. Okay, so you're getting the idea. What we're doing is we are choosing keywords that we're going to use in order to gather our assets to our timeline. So in this particular case, we're going to look for misconception in college. We're going to look for after in credit card. We're going to look for prevent and line of credit or loan. And we're now going to use this keyword list in order to draw assets to the timeline. So we'd start with misconception in college. So now we've designed our first scene. As you can see, misconception in college with words and then this image. And we're going to go through the same list of keywords throughout the entire audio and we're going to design our scenes. Now once we've designed all the scenes in the very same way, it will then be time to bring the audio into the video creation software. But before we do that, there is a step that we're going to need to take. and We'll discuss that in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You are looking at the interface of the animated video creator called My Simple Show. 
it is fairly new relative to some of the others that are on the market. And we've said that for the most part, the animated video creators are primarily the same. However, my simple show is different in some ways that are significant. Now you'll notice that when we start the project, and we're going to go ahead and just write in a project name here. And what you're going to notice is that what my simple show asks you for is either your script or your PowerPoint file. And if you have a PowerPoint file, what you can do is you can actually upload that PowerPoint file as it is to my simple show. So we're going to go ahead and add a PowerPoint file to my simple show. When we do that, my simple show will start the processing then it'll give you a wizard we're gonna click let's start what you're going to notice is that the video creator has actually taken your slides and it has turned it into a script of sorts and so you can actually use your script and upload it directly to the video creator and have some of the process already started for you now you can actually change some of the words in your script at a specific point but what you have is your script already inside of the video creator and it's already ready to go now what we're gonna do is we're just going to go to the next step because that's the most important part and we're going to click the choose visual button and so the software will actually do a calculation and then it'll actually look for images for you. So we're going to click that sounds great here. Now my simple show is a cloud based operation. So this software actually operates in the cloud and you are going to have an account if you choose to use this video creator. But what it does is it actually gives you part of the process which is already done for you. And you're going to notice that it actually has taken your script and it has started the process for you by putting some images in there and if you've already gathered your images this is going to be helpful to you because you can actually go inside of each image and we're going to take just a minute so that you can see what happens now what we can do is we can change this image to text we can change this image to one that we have on our hard drive or we can change this image to something that we have used before. We can actually change this image to something that is part of the inventory inside of my simple show. Okay, now we can actually close out this part. We can go back. And we can make something different into a keyword or we can use an existing keyword. So basically, what my simple show does is it actually puts images onto the canvas for you and it gives you the opportunity to work with a canvas that is already done for you and of course once you've gone through this and you have laid out all of your images what you can do is you can actually choose specific audio for your video now of course what you could do is you could actually use the voice it's a robotic voice inside of my simple show we would not do that of course what we would do is we would add in our own voiceover like all of the other video creators, you can record your audio using your script and reading it or narrating it. And then you can also upload an audio that is already done as well as adding in some music if you choose not to use a voiceover at all. Now the current pricing at My Simple Show is a little more expensive than some of the others. As you can see, depending on when you are seeing this video, of course, you would want to remove the watermark. And so this is the area that you would be looking at in order to do your business videos. What you're paying for here is you're paying for a little more convenience in terms of the process. But again, what matters is how much you're going to use this and whether or not this is going to be part of your business to produce these kinds of videos. The additional payment on a monthly basis is really saving you time and maybe even saving you from having to get an outsourcer to do some of the work. Okay, so that is the My Simple Show website and video creator. And as we've said, it is a little different and can help you depending on how you want to create your videos. Welcome back. Now in this video, we want to start talking about timeline operations. Of course, every video creator is going to be different, but 
when you start talking about matching audio to the images that are going to be in your video, you are going to have some options and tools available to you in order to make the timing perfect. What you're going to notice is that there is an image, there is a whiteboard, and there's some writing on top of that whiteboard. And what we want to talk about in this video are native images to a scene. We're going to open up this image and you're going to notice that as we appear with this image that there is a whiteboard and then there is a businesswoman standing there. Now we decided to make this image native to the scene and you'll notice then that there is zero time that it takes in order to draw the image and what that means is is that when the scene starts this image is already going to be there and that's one tool that you have available to you you don't have the time in order to draw it you can make that time zero in terms of the time it takes to draw it and you can make it the first image in a scene so that when the scene starts it appears so let's take a look at how that actually works and we're going to close this and we're just going to play this particular scene and we're going to do that by just clicking this button inside of our video creator and so what you notice is that when the scene started the businesswoman as well as her clipboard was already there and we started the animation with the writing and again native images give you the opportunity to put in explanatory images when a scene begins and then you can actually build around those images when you're actually doing your animation now this computer monitor in our video is another native image. You'll notice that it has zero time to animate. So when the scene actually starts, this computer monitor will be in the scene at the very beginning. And we're gonna build around this computer monitor. So once again, let's take a look at how this monitor actually works in our scene. So you can see that having a native image actually gives you more options. It allows you to put more images in the screen to make your video more explanatory. So use this technique in terms of your timeline in order to give your video more life and more images so that your viewer will know what you are trying to say. Welcome back. Now in this video we're going to be talking about another one of the timeline operations. In this particular case you're looking at the video creator Sparkle and they call the time that it takes in order for the image to be drawn animate. Now this may be called something different in your video creator and the effect that you're trying to achieve is only partially important. What's important is the length of time that you decide that image is going to be drawn. And you can see here that it was decided that this writing introduction to strategic marketing was going to take 1.5 seconds. Now, let's take a look as to how that works. So you can see there that this was timed so that it would coincide with the actual voiceover. Now, depending on how your video creator works, you can actually make that longer. That may not match exactly with the timing, but what you're trying to do with your scenes is you're trying to time the exact total time of the scene and not so much the individual words to the writing. So let's take a look. If we were to lengthen the drawing time or the animation time, let's take a look at how that would work in this video. And as you can see, the timing is a little less precise, but again, all we're really trying to do is to get the timing of the entire scene in order to match. You'll see the same thing at play here when we look at this chart. So let's take a look at the drawing of this chart, and we've set this to 2.5 seconds. Strategically. That means that and once again, what we could do is we could shorten this. We could shorten this to two seconds or 1.5 seconds, and then we can take another look at this. Times, they must market strategically. 
So you can see that one of the elements that you have control of is the amount of time that it takes something to animate and finish its full effect. Now you're going to have lots of options inside of just about any video creator to do lots of different effects. But the most important thing is the timing and that it occurs so that it makes your viewer focus not only on what's being said, but what they're looking at on the screen. What you want to be aware of when you're working with a timeline is that every change that you make is going to affect every scene that occurs after that. So if we lengthen this to 3.5 seconds, what that means is that these images are going to appear one second later. And so you're going to have to go back and make an adjustment here near the end. And it's fully possible to do that, but you want to make sure that you are looking at the entire timing of your entire scene as you go. So let's take a look at what we mean by that. At the very beginning of this video, we actually changed introduction to strategic marketing, the writing to 2.5 seconds. However, we compensated for that by shortening the length of time that it takes to draw this chart to 1.5 seconds. That would mean then that we would expect that the total timing of this video would be about the same. Now this function exists in Sparkle Video Scribe and exists in just about every other video creator and that is that we can preview the entire scribe before we actually turn it into a video and you're going to want to do this throughout your creation so that you'll understand and see the timing as it goes. Now we're not going to actually do this in this video, but you can actually do this at every stage as well as to play the individual scene elements. And you want to make sure that it's matching with the audio as you go. Now in the next video, we're going to be talking about another timeline element that will help you to increase your accuracy in timing. Welcome back. Now in this video, we want to discuss very briefly the timeline operation of the pause. And so we're going to open up Introduction to Strategic Marketing. And we've discussed the animation timeline operation, but you'll notice that there is actually something called pause. And you will find this inside of Sparkle as well as some of the other video creators. In some cases, you will not find this operation. And what the pause does is it allows us to pause after the animation is being drawn. And what you're trying to do with the pause is you are trying to match the timing of the animation to the actual voiceover. So if you look at animation plus pause, this should equal the timing of the actual discussion. So in other words, we will actually play introduction to strategic marketing and you'll be able to see it then. Now you'll notice that there was a slight pause before it starts to transition to the next scene. And what this does is it allows us to match the words to the actual speaker. In some cases, you will not want there to be a pause at all. And you'll see that as we illustrate with this chart. You'll notice that it took 1.5 seconds to draw the chart. We, want, don't, we don't want there to be any pause between the actual drawing and the actual next part of the animation. And the reason is because we want the timing to actually match the words marked strategically. And so you are actually doing each scene as one piece, but you control the pause so that it gives you additional time for the words to appear on the screen. So for example, let's take a look at market strategically after the chart. Or difficult economic times, they must market strategically. That means that Okay, so you'll notice that there was no pause after the chart, but then there's a slight pause after market strategically because we want there to be timing between starting the next discussion, starting the next image, and starting the next screen. So what we're effectively trying to do is we're trying to give our viewer the opportunity to see the visual as well as to see some of the words as they're being spoken. Now in some cases, you will have the pause combined with the transition. If that's the case, you'll need to operate these two together, but it bears a separate discussion because the transition actually is a timeline operation that does something entirely different. And we're going to discuss that in the next video. 
Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to talk about the timeline operation of transition. And in some cases, and in some video creators, you will find that the transition feature is really combined with the pause feature. And basically, it's everything that happens after the pause or the animation or the movement to the next element in the scene. In some cases, this is going to be the transition to the entire next scene. But basically, we're going to move from this element introduction to strategic marketing to the next element in the scene so you're going to be able to control how fast that happens with the transition feature and once again when you're using native images to a scene or to your video you're not even going to use a transition so in other words there's not going to be any transition between the appearance of this image and then the starting of the next animation and one but that is the only special case where your transition would be absolutely nothing. In most cases, because of the cadence of the actual narrator, your transition is going to be pretty consistent throughout your video. But once again, you're trying to time this entire piece for a scene and you can actually use the transition when your audio doesn't match exactly with your animation and your words. You're gonna notice here for the very last element we have no transition we have a 4.5 second pause and the reason that we're doing that so that these words will appear after the narrator has stopped and it will actually stay on the screen because it's our call to action it's the last thing that we want people to see and we want this to be before people when they actually finish the video so these are the elements inside of every video creator that you'll want to use in order to time your words with your audio or the images with the audio and it actually gives you latitude in terms of what you want to place on the actual canvas in terms of what you want to display welcome back you are now looking at the warriors for hair section of the warrior form and this is where you can find service providers who will be able to do any of the steps that we have outlined in this course now you may want to do some or all of the steps yourself but the pieces that you don't want to do, you can actually outsource to them in the Warriors for Hire section. And you'll see this if you do a simple search using the word animated, you'll be able to find different people who will do different parts of the process. Now remember, if you choose not to use an outsourcer, one of the services that you can use, again, is a little more expensive than your typical video creator, but does a lot of the process for you, you can use my Simple Show. For the process of content creation and finding actual facts for business, you can use the website Marketing Charts, which has a number of articles that will give you fact-based information that would be great to put inside of your videos as long as you give the proper attribution to the actual writer. Another newsletter that has good factual information that you can actually place inside of your videos is the eMarketer newsletter, and you can sign up and subscribe to that newsletter and then get access to their database. Finally, another way for you to find fact-based information to place in your videos is to use the Google Scholar website. This is where you will find academic articles as well as studies and surveys. So you now have a process you can use inside of any video creator such as Powtoon or Go Animate or even Animatron or any video creator that you want to use. One of the keys is going to be getting your information into script form and being able to either narrate it or have it narrated, picking keywords for each of your scenes, getting any additional images that you are going to need in order to do your animation finding royalty-free music if you're going to use music in your videos, and then using the timeline operation tools in order to match the audio with what you want people to see in your video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you either in another video or in another course.